guess when Kensington Palace said Kate was at home recovering, she truly was at home recovering. I mean, maybe if we had a sick woman, I wouldn't have had to get in front of a camera and beg us to leave her be. But that being said, it's forced quite a few to eat crow, celebrities included. One celebrity left to awkwardly apologize for their commentary was Stephen Colbert, who poked fun at the missing Kate controversies on his late night show with Stephen Colbert. In the wake of that monologue he had done, he was criticized by some for giving light to the frenzy of online rumors, but as of her official cancer announcement on Friday, there was a clamoring online for the TV host to apologize. So on Monday night, Colbert issued a full apology on his show, saying to audiences, quote, we do a lot of shows and I tell a lot of jokes and I tell jokes about a lot of different things, mostly what everybody's talking about. And for the last six weeks to two months, everybody's been talking about the mystery of Kate Middleton's disappearance from public life. He continued on to say that two weeks ago, we did some jokes about that mystery and all the attendant frou-frou in the reporting about that. And when I made those jokes, that upset some people, even before her diagnosis was revealed, and I can understand that. He went on to send Kate well wishes, noting that he does hold himself to a standard, which quote, does not make light of someone else's tragedy. To quote him, I don't know whether her prognosis is a tragic one, but regardless of what it is, I know and I'm sure many of you, far too many of us know, that any cancer diagnosis of any kind is harrowing for the patient and their family, he said. And though I'm sure they don't need it from me and everyone here at the Late Night Show would like to apologize and extend our well wishes and a heartfelt note that her recovery is swift and thorough. <laughs> Some have argued it's a pretty mid apology from Culver, but he is a comedian after all. Now Blake Lively was one I didn't actually expect one from, mostly because her poking fun at the Middleton mystery was so minute it was not really too notice, but her guilt made Lively one of the first to apologize publicly to Kate. March 22nd, Lively posts on her Instagram story, I quote, I made a silly post around the Photoshop fails frenzy and oh man, that post has me mortified today. I'm sorry, sending love and well wishes to all, always. The Age Adeline actor is referring to a prior Instagram post, which was announcing an update for her alcohol brand, Betty Buzz, on the 15th of March, which made a subtle nod to the Photoshop frenzy online. Lively showed a photo of her head conspicuously photoshopped onto like a distorted woman's body, lounging by a pool with one of her Betty Buzz drinks in hand, as a pointed reference to the poor edited royal family photo, and poking fun even more so she had commented as our caption, now you know why I've been MIA. Ironically named Pop Apologists podcast also released an apology. Lauren and Chandler, the two sisters behind the program, issued their apology while announcing they had taken down a multi-part series about Kate that featured some of the most widely spread videos during the height of the Where's Kate frenzy. To quote them, throughout this whole process, we knew there was a lot of possible outcomes. This feels like one of the worst, the sisters wrote on Instagram. We are truly devastated by this development, but hopeful to hear that the chemotherapy is preventative. Our admiration of Princess Catherine has never wavered, and we are now just praying for her to continue getting healthier every day. Similarly, we have an apology from journalist Owen Jones for adding to the commentary on Kate's whereabout. After photo agencies pulled the Photoshop family picture from Britain's Mother's Day, Jones remarked on it and the kill notices with, I'm so obsessed with this already, oh my god. Another post of theirs featured Jones sharing his skepticism about a photograph of Kate and Prince William in the car together. It's the same one the View ladies had speculated about, and we'll be talking about them in a bit. He wrote, you have to be kidding me. That is not a public appearance, choo choo, all aboard the Kate Middleton Truther Express. Now in light of Kate's admission of illness, the journalist was one of many to quickly come forward and apologize, stating he feels ashamed for the speculation and wishes Kate well. To quote, as someone who speculated on this without considering it could be a serious health condition, I'm very ashamed to be honest, and all the very best to her, he wrote on Twitter. Sarah Vine is a column writer who had tapped into the Kate drama, and now this ex-wife of leveling up secretary Michael Gove used the same column in the Mail on Sunday to apologize. She wrote, never explain, never apologize, the old saying goes. But there are times where one must do both. She continued to say, we all to the greater or lesser extent owe the prince and princess of Wales an apology, myself included, for giving them such a hard time over that doctored Mother's Day photo, as well as Prince William's last minute decision to pull out of his godfather's memorial service. Popular online influencer Saint Hoax also issued an apology. They had been an epicenter for spreading rumors and crazed conspiracies specifically in the forms of memes, making light of the situation to such a degree that when the news broke, the user was actually incredibly quick to share their shock and guilt, writing, yeah, I definitely feel bad about laughing at the Kate Gate memes, wishing her a speedy recovery to their 3.4 million followers to see alongside a video of Kate's cancer admission video. Linda Nolan's also one of the few cancer diagnosed celebrities coming forward to express well wishes. She told ITV's 
Good Morning Britain that those who commented on the situation and feel guilty should. They should also apologize and express remorse for their actions. To quote her, of course they should say sorry, but you know, sorry is an easy word to say sometimes and they may be doing it because other people are doing it. They should never have even thought of it in the first place and to put down lies and horrible words, sorry doesn't cut it sometimes. The singer 65 is part of the family pop group The Nolans and she is also being treated for cancer, but in her case it is her brain, bones and liver. Addressing Kate's message in her video, Linda Nolan said, I thought it was perfect. I'm suffering myself and I listen and I took everything in and she's so right for someone who has been diagnosed. Hope. You've got to have hope and people around you that love you. And that I think she did well in the fact that she came out and told us when she didn't have to. Who says they have to tell their life story? They're doing their jobs. If she wants to keep it a secret and keep her treatment a secret then that's how she's going to handle it and good luck to her. Well wishes also came from two other cancer diagnosed celebrities. We're going to compound them. That's Olivia Munn and Katie Couric. The predator actress and still relatively new mom Munn wished for the best for Prince of Wales after the Friday announcement, writing in a tweet, thank you for showing what it's like to fight with grace and determination for yourself and your family. Wishing you all the best. Katie Couric, who was diagnosed with breast cancer, just like Olivia Munn, but in September of 2022, wrote as someone who has experienced cancer, I was deeply moved by her comments, sending her and her family healing thoughts. Reality TV star and former Atomic Kitten singer, Carrie Katona, said she'd, and I quote, hold my hands up as she expressed regret for spreading conspiracy theories, especially as she feels as a celebrity, it's so much easier not to. To quote her, I'm no better than the next person. You pick up a magazine, I read about something and go, I can't believe that's happened to him. Then I read something about myself and I go, oh, that's a complete load of bull crap. So I understand how we all get pulled in by it all, is how Carrie explained it. And it's a fair point. As a celebrity, you know how fans and paparazzi are, and you know that you don't have to tell them the full truth. You should be assuming that all of your celebrity peers are doing the same as well. But it can be easy to forget and fall into a rabbit hole of judgment or rumor mongering, just like anyone can. Carrie told The Sun, there were so many conspiracy theories, I'll hold my hands up. I think I was one of the theory spreaders as well. You know, it was like the royal family or our family, we all think we know them and I understand better than anybody, she explained, commenting on why people, especially Britons, felt so comfortable speculating as widely and as openly as they did on someone who's going to be their next queen. Everyone thinks that they know who you are as a true person and I just feel like we've all gone down this rabbit hole and I got sucked into. Too. And that brings us to our last apologies, The View hosts. Theirs were offered up just this past Monday as Sarah Haynes, Sunny Hostin, and Farrah Griffin admitted that they were quote guilty of having gotten into the fun of Where's Kate and stating that they should have listened to co-panelist Whoopi Goldberg who had advised her co-host to give the royal family some privacy previously. The three had broken down potential conspiracies last week regarding Middleton's status following her disappearance from the public eye, including dissecting an infamously altered photo of her and her children, as well as speaking suppositions about potential body doubles that infuriated Whoopi Goldberg so much she sent the show to an early commercial break. I forgot something fundamental that we all know. Every person, whether they're a princess, somebody in a high privilege position, or just the person next to you is dealing with personal struggles we don't know about. I send my love and strengths to her, said Farah. Meanwhile, Haynes called Middleton's diagnosis a heart-wrenching development, saying, you've never know what someone's going through. I've always questioned the way that the royal family handles women, whether it was Princess Diana or Fergie or Meghan Markle, Haynes said. I was not blaming Kate for what was going on. It really bothered me the way it was handled. Whether it was my business or not could be debated. Anna Navarro also called this a teachable moment and that she learned a specific lesson. When Whoopi Goldberg tells me to mind my own damn business, I'll mind my own damn business from now on. And that she's not going to weigh in on personal matters that aren't her business in the future. I'm going to shut my mouth, Navarro told the audience. That's a good lesson for us all. Shut your mouth. Mind your business. We won't have to eat our own words and feel guilty and then apologize in the first place if we don't say these things. So, share your apologies down below, or some people you think should be apologizing. Until next time, drop a like, share with a friend, and I'll see you around.